Thanks so much, Chris. <laughs>
we have this um, corpus that you know is facts. So how do you make an attribution in this setting? You want to have some kind of external validity. You want this answer to be corroborated by one of your sources. And in our work, we call this a corroborative attribution. And this goes back to the medical QA setting where you want the output to be corroborated in some way. Okay, what about this other case that I talked about? What about debugging? So let's say someone, let's say this language model is now trying to convince you, well, you know, the moon is actually two times the diameter of the earth. Um, most people should know that this is not true. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so now you might ask, okay, where is this output from? And so let's say you go back to your corpus of fine tuning documents and you see, okay, well actually um, two of these documents were used to generate this output. And if you now want to debug maybe information that you think is suspect, what you want is kind of this causal relationship between how um, between these training documents and the output. So the question you're asking here when you say attributions is, how is this generated? And this is closer to ideas of internal, internal validity in terms of where this output came from. And in our work, we call this a contributive attribution. And if you need to find, a, a, among all the sources that were used to generate the output, you want the specific source that contributed to the incorrect part of the output you might then look for corroboration to support, uh, to somehow match between the source and the actual output. Okay, so now that we've seen, now that we've seen when we use the word attribution, it can mean vastly different things. And so re to recap, um, in this setting where you get some answer and all you want to do is verify the output, um, what you can use is literally any source. You don't have to be related to the training data at all. Uh, and we just want to identify a source that matches this information. In contrast, when you want to know how the uh, attribution was generated, what you want to do is find influential examples in the model output. And hopefully when I describe these, this brings to mind large bodies of related work and thus motivates our systemization of knowledge paper. Because these two bodies of related work, although we call them attributions interchangeably in the LLM setting, uh, come from vastly different uh, academic fields. So for example, corroborative attribution is closer to the citation generation and in information retrieval communities um, in NLP. So questions you can ask here are um, questions of factuality, fact-checking, uh, things like that, uh, different QA systems. In contrast, when we think about contributive attribution, the scholarship is actually very disjoint. We've seen in more of the core ML community uh, techniques such as influence functions, data models, gradient tracing type techniques that tell us uh, what are the influential points uh, that contributed to this output. So our contributions, um, we do a survey of corroborative and contributive attributions. So we go through existing work in terms of everything that people are calling attributions and how they're applied to LLM outputs. And most importantly, we think about the use cases. So we think about in these modern applications that I'm talking about, such as co-generation, such as legal drafting, which type of attributions do you actually want? Because in order to measure how good attributions want, you have to first be clear in terms of what type of attribution you're looking at, and secondly, be clear in terms of how to measure them. And so I wanna go into one use case, um, the use case of LLMs for healthcare. So let's say you have a fine-tuned production QA model, and you want to debug and remove false answers from the fine-tuned production model. And so how do, you, how do you go about doing this? How do you even know what system to add in order to get attributions? Well, we outlined this use case. You can think about, well, first I will need to identify which outputs are suspect. So this is a search process, right? You need to search through all the different outputs of your model that might not be correct. 
And in this case, you need to attribute the outputs to an existing corpus that you actually do care about, um, that you know is that you know is factual and you can trust. Um, and then after you identify these documents, then you want to identify which training documents maybe should be removed or adjusted so that you can edit the model such that um, you can correct the outputs. So in this one single task, you see how both types of attributions are might need to be used. And in our paper, we have more examples um, on human AI collaboration and document generation that uh, is relevant in this case. And so in addition to surveying and being motivated by existing use cases, uh, we also present a formalized unified framework. So, so far we've talked about these two attributions as very disjoint and different. And we've talked about how in many applications we need both. Well, a key contribution of our work is we unify these attribution systems into common components. So what are some common components that these attributions have? Uh, well, how you define the input, model, and output um, can be standardized across both types of attributions. Attribution domain is very important. It's what corpus of documents are you actually attributing to? And in the, con in the contributive case, we talked about your training data. You want to attribute to the training data. And in the fact-checking corroborative case, we talked about attributing to a data set that you trust. Uh, other components include attribution units. So how exactly from a large paragraph that's generated or a large section of code that's generated, uh, do you decide which elements to attribute? And one thing that I will highlight along these common components is the, this idea of an evaluator. So once you generate an attribution, how do you decide, is it a good attribution? Uh, do we want to do better? And so here are some possible approaches. So for example, for corroborative attributions, you can think about exact match to reference documents. Uh, for contributive, you can think about how modifying um, your training data can changes the loss counterfactually. And interestingly, if you think about how taking out a training document affects the output now of the model, then you can use, again, a corroborative evaluator to, to understand exactly how the output has changed. And so we also talk about common properties uh, in this unified framework um, as our contributions. And so the takeaways are uh, we want, really want to introduce this framework mostly um, so that we have this language for considering these use cases where we require richer attributions. Um, this shared language enables precise reasoning about what type of attribution you need in different use cases. And since there's so many common components in the way we've redefined attribution uh, systems, this hopefully will increase cross-pollination in terms of these fields sharing techniques and evaluation methods for attributions. Okay. And there's more in our paper, including more directions uh, and future work. And um, please come find us at our poster uh, and talk to Teddy about our work. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions. <laughs>